distinguished himself as a Salish tribe for having married a black free woman when he already had a wife of Flathead Reservation. Sam Walking Kyle sold his animals to Michael Pablo and Charles Allen in 1884. They, in turn, sold them to the Conrad Ranch because Pablo said it was more profitable to sell them than maintain them. Since the bison range were not native to this country, and the Indians sold the only bison they had, I can see no geographic or cultural ties between the tribe and the bison. Consequently, I do not believe they meet the criteria for entering into negotiations to assume management of the national bison members. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a racial issue. This is not an issue of whether or not the tribe can manage the bison range. This issue is money. It's a money issue. The present budget for the National Bison Range is approximately $1.2 million. If the tribe is loose management of the, of the bison range, they will continue to receive that same budget. The tribe can use a portion of that budget as matching funds to request additional matching funds from the federal government. Conceivably, they can use $200,000 of that budget to request an additional $200,000 from the federal government for matching funds and use those for other projects other than the National Bison Range. Under the present management, the Fish and Wildlife Service has to return any excess funds they have at the end of fiscal year. Under the travel management, Diana Sanipoxi, Cody, Confederate Salish, and Kufi tribal member of Salish, and uh, mother of seven, graduate of the University of Montana.
and make it work together.
one of the best running utilities in the Pacific Northwest. We work with a lot of different managers from around the Northwest, and any one of those managers that you ask will tell you that. Talk to Western Montana GMT, they'll agree with you. At the lowest rates of any utility in the Pacific Northwest, our customer satisfaction is extremely high. There was just a survey done last year, pulled the residents of Lake County, listed out 28 different services that are provided in the county. Mission Valley Power ranked number one. So it's a, a, a really well-known utility. It's well respected by the customers. We have customers from Platinum Electric wanting to come down and join Mission Valley Power. We have customers from Zoom Electric wanting to join Mission Valley Power. It's run by the tribes. It was run by the federal government, by the Department of the Interior. When the tribes took it over, it was a mess. Tribes have invested millions of dollars in restoring the system at prices low, on the lowest in the Pacific Northwest, it's a great run outfit. Don't take my word for it, ask other utility managers around Montana and the Pacific Northwest. So I think it's modified to say the tribe can't manage the bison range. They can, and they can do a better job of it than the federal government can. My last point is, is that this isn't just a local issue, it's a national issue. Most of the people that come to the bison range are from around the country, not local people. And it's my view that if the tribes managed, it would be a much bigger attraction to people from uh, outside of the local area. People like the fact that Indians and, and buffalo, that they like the cultural aspect of Indians and buffalo. We find that very interesting at the National Bison Range. I think it'd be great for the local economy. I live just a couple miles from the Bison Range. I have a small business and I strongly support tribal management of the National Bison Range. Good evening. Uh, I feel like I'm singing to the choir, or maybe a, a portion of the choir. But I can't sing as well as this young lady, a uh, couple of people that. The only song I know is God Bless America. And related to that, it has nothing to do with tribes. You know, it was just a hundred years ago that this whole thing was started. One hundred years ago, local interests were destroying our special places. One hundred years ago. And Theodore Roosevelt stepped up and said, no more. We're going to protect them. And he created the National Wildlife Federation and the National Parks and any of the national forests. And guess what? 100 years later, I benefited, my generations benefited, and God willing in the future, my children's generation will benefit from that management. Well, what's different? Why is this a threat to us? Local versus national. Now, someone said earlier that local is better. And it is. However, local management with local representatives is not better. They change rapidly. Their viewpoints change rapidly. Even the politicians in Missoula change rapidly. And I dislike some of the things they do. And you do too. There's no checks and balances related to the national public. The same is true. We have got to have a system of checks and balances, and that's what this federal system has done for us. This may work and it may not, but if it doesn't and it starts to erode, that last hundred years is going to be lost. Thank you.
and that's the tribe's responsibility to decide what is inherently federal. That should be in black and white, on the line, everything should be laid out, and then the Interior Department should turn around and show it to the tribes and say, this is the deal. Do you want it or not? But to sit down and negotiate what is inherently federal is circumventing the process, and that's what all of these people are concerned about tonight, is it's not being done fairly. It's not being done fairly. As far as Fish and Wildlife Service policy, Fish and Wildlife Service policy was not put in place because of tribes. Fish and Wildlife Service policy should not be changed because of tribes. Policy was put there to protect the animals, animals on earth. And inherent federal responsibilities weren't put in place because of tribes. And they should not be changed because of tribes. I just believe that negotiations are going way too fast. Um, they've got a deadline for June 30th to finalize to finalize this thing. And this, we've got a room full of people like this tonight. Half of them are saying, you owe it to us. The other half are saying, we don't want to give it to you. We've got a long ways to go between the two groups before this thing's signed and we're only 30 days away. I suggest everybody back off, the federal government back off, the tribes back off, and go about this right. Because this isn't just the vice range, and it's not just this Indian tribe. This is nationwide. This is wildlife managers nationwide. This is parks nationwide. Whatever Mr. Hoffman and this tribe comes up with, uh, their negotiation is going to set the presidents for the rest of them. Rather, people say so or not. That's exactly what's going to happen, so it should be done in the next 30 days. Thank you. My name is Sherry Jarley. I'm an attorney. I work at St. Ignatius, Montana. I've been out of law school for about seven years. Um, I'm a member of the Sinaboy tribe, and I've had the pleasure of living on the Flathead Reservation for approximately 15 years. I was able to go and listen in a man and again tonight. And one thing that seems very apparent is that we are in a very unique situation. I think, you know, with all due respect, Reverend, um, I do resent the fact that as a citizen, an American citizen, a taxpaying citizen, a citizen um, within the exterior boundaries of the Flathead Reservation, that there were some just blatant inaccuracies of what the law is. I want to give you an example. In the slideshow that we were presented with at the beginning, we were told that if the tribe took over management, that there would be a loss of equal opportunity in hiring, and thus that was racial discrimination. I've had the pleasure of researching this actually for tribes and for some of my clients as to what is racial discrimination. And I think that we really need to, if some of the points that have been made tonight or in Roman concern people, I really, really encourage you to research some of the facts. And then as people come up, whether it be a reverend or others in your community come up and want to quote the law to you, I really encourage you to um, seek adequate legal advice. The, it's really clear in the United States Supreme Court that any type of Indian preference in hiring is legal. Okay, now I want to be really clear about that. I think before Dan Decker was um, really interrupted, that was one of the points he was trying to make, is look, I mean, look at the big picture and $1.2 million management. I haven't heard in all of the examples I've been listening and trying to understand what is the problem here? What is the problem with the tribe management? I have heard examples of one disgruntled employee, a lumber operation that had some questionable facts. I was a former prosecutor and I, I find it very surprising that the tribe of police investigated anything, that absolutely nothing was done that somebody 
they shot the moose pursuant to their treaty rights, um, and that that taxpayers are opposed to this. I I am um, I I urge a support for the CSK team management of the National Bison Range. And just encourage everybody to do your adequate research with the facts and the law. Thank you.
programs of these two respective governments have strengths and weaknesses, but they have complemented one another over time and continue to do so. I think that the U.S. government will be making a terrible mistake by compacting the management of our national heritage to the tribes, not because the tribes are managing improperly, but by phasing out federal presence in wildlife management efforts in the Mission Valley, over time, natural resource protection and the quality of life of the entire community will suffer because the expertise in noxious weed management and habitat conservation that the Fish and Wildlife Service has been bringing to the table for nearly 100 years will no longer be available to those of us that work to preserve that special place we call home. Perhaps the most troubling to me is that the proposed action could be the tip of the iceberg in dismantling the natural resource conservation legacy that is the heritage of all citizens of this country. Criteria of geographic, historical, and cultural connection for federal programs to revert to tribal management is a sham by the U.S. government. American Indians are, by definition, have American Indians by definition have geographic and historic connections to the lands of all 50 United States, and the proud tradition of living in harmony with nature is indisputable. Girls
when wildlife populations were numbers, population numbers were at their lowest numbers. Each refuge serves as an island where animals, wildlife populations were able to recover and propagate. The National Wildlife Refuges are not a success because they are owned by uh, locally managed by private interest groups, companies, individuals all over North America. They're a success because they are managed by trained wildlife professionals who work for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. These people, regardless of their sex, color, creed, religion, or beliefs, um, have an interest in conservation of our natural resources and dedicate their lives to preserving these wildlife populations. And, and I might add, at a much reduced um, amount of money than they could make in other professions. It has, been, it has been said that you can have too much government, and I agree with that in many areas, but not when it comes to our natural resources and the National Wildlife Refuge System. Federal land should not be privatized by individuals, local governments, corporations, or tribal governments. What's next? Our national parks, forest service, BLM lands. Hi, my name is Billy Thomas, and I support the tribe taking management over the bison range. I am an Indian, and I support the tribe management of the bison range.
And that's why I called this meeting, along with some other citizens, I was not the only person that called this meeting. And like I said before, we had talked to Mr. Hoffman, and we had asked if we could have it at the end of the summer, and he thought that was a good idea. Your comments tonight are really counting, because the big negotiations are starting June 9th. So with that, I want to thank all of you. And I want to turn this back over to questions and answers. Um, if we can't answer them, we will get the answers. So if we can't, please give us your business card or your name or whatever. Um, would you like to come up and finish this up? and they hung up on 
me. That's a little too prejudiced for me. Now, are they going to be that prejudiced running the bison range? Thank you. still can't hear you well enough to know Which you. of our chiefs, oh. Salish, Kootenai, or Condoré, offered you that land, not you, sorry, the government, no. the 18,000 acres for sale? Since you directed that at me, I'll take a minute to answer it. There are a lot of things that were not said here tonight. One was, I don't hear anybody saying, and I didn't say that it was just when the reservation was open to homesteading. And I didn't have any part of that. I wasn't even that old. I may look that old, but I'm not. I wasn't around at that time. But it was congressional action, and they're not always right. And later on, they tried to make up for it with the Claims Commission, and there was a just day in court, and it was settled. But uh, that, does that answer your question? No, it doesn't. Oh, no. Um, I guess the point I'm trying to make is the tribes never offered land for sale for the bison ranch. I'd like to have that indelibly etched in all of your minds. There was never a for sale sign hung on our reservation, and there is documented proof by your white historians of our ancestors going to Washington, D.C. and writing letters and circulating petitions on our reservation in opposition to opening the reservation at all because our chiefs knew we give an inch, we lose a mile. The Northern Pacific Railroad right away was forced upon us that same way. Record of opposition. Go do the research to the National Archives. Second part, um, the Indian Claims Commission, the five plus million dollars was not for the bison range alone. Again, you should do the research because there are other parcels within the reservation similarly affected that we were due compensation for. And again, people, the tribe is not asking for ownership. So just get off that one right now. Because if we did, we'd go to Congress and say, appropriate the money to buy it back and give it to us. That'd be my vote. I know how to write to Congress. I know how to contact them. Um, there was one more question I have for Mr. Wiseman. I saw something on the internet about the National Wildlife Refuge System, that 90% uh, of the land within the refuge system is withdrawn from the public domain. Can you explain what that means? Public domain land is land that were never patented, never privately owned, and most of that land, as you pointed out, 90%, most of that is in Alaska. Does that mean that there's really no such thing as public access or use of that land then? No, most of that land does have public access and use. In fact, with the National Wildlife Refuge System, which is approximately 93 million acres, uh, there are six public use priorities. So public use is an integral part of the National Wildlife Refuge System. Thank you.
that said, in their past brochures, that they take over the Pfizer branch, right, they will provide better visitor access. I would like to have somebody from the tribe explain to me how they can improve on the present visitor access that's presently in place. I think that's a very valid question, and I would hope that someone from the tribe would get back with him on it. Um, that has come up, and I think we have to realize what the what the what the refuge is meant to be. It is meant to be a quiet place for animals. It's not meant to be a tourist attraction. That's just my opinion, but I know that it's the opinion of a lot of wildlife biologists, and I'm married to one. Would you answer it? This lady's been the one with the beautiful voice. I think. You're the one with the beautiful voice. <laughs> Alright, let's just say I was running the bison range. If you want the better uh, Better access would be that we would have a bus and it would drive you around and you wouldn't have to waste your car gas to go around there because we'd have a bus. And you would also be able to enjoy a meal there and, and you'd be able to see more videos of the animals and, and maybe some education on why we are preserving these animals. This is what I would do if I and I'm a tribal member, and I'm also a citizen, and it, everything, as anything, can always go for some little bit of improvement. That's how we evolve into making things better. And that's what it would be like. Thank you. I certainly couldn't get into any specifics. The Fish and Wildlife Service which that has priority public uses. All public uses on any national wildlife refuge have to be compatible with the purposes of the refuge. And to determine that, we would need to go through a planning process. The process that's, uh, that's set forth uh, currently is the conservation uh, planning process. And that would need to be gone through for the price range. And you're right, there are always opportunities for improvement. And you know, going through that planning process, you know, uh, the Fish and Wildlife Service invites all public uh, input, you know, with ideas to improve things and change things if need be to make them better, and still maintain our wildlife first priority. My question relates to um, civil service employees. Where? If it is managed by the tribe, where would, how would the people, would they continue to go up through the ranks of the Fish and Wildlife Service, or would there be a, another hiring system? Hi, I just want to state, for the record, again, like I stated in my comment, the tribes are not here in an official capacity, and some of these questions are difficult to answer because the process is a negotiation process that it is just the beginning. Some of these answers we don't know. They have to be negotiated in the annual funding um, compact that we're discussing. I know Dave can answer some of these questions as well as, as we can. And so I just want to make clear that we are, will encourage the public process, but some of these questions cannot be answered at this time. And I just, again, want to state that we're not here in an official capacity, and, and I apologize, and we will, we will seek the answers, but at this point in time, you, you, some of these questions just can't be answered.
question. Uh, all the comments here tonight seem to be on why we should not let the tribe take over management of the vice range. My question is why should we let them take over the management? Is there a problem there? Why should we let the tribe? Does anybody know why we should let the tribe take over the management of those three refuges? Why we should let the tribe manage the, the bison on the bison range is because it's right there on our reservation, and and we are uh, really close to the bison. We dance, we dance, when we dance, that power we dance to honor our spiritual helpers. The bison is one. We don't worship the bison like a god, but we but we know that the bison was given to us by the creator as, as our ancestors used to um, get everything from the buffalo. Food, shelter, clothing, and even utensils. And this, this animal is sacred to our people. And, and, it's a, and that is one good reason why we sh should be managing our uh, sacred bison. It's not only sacred to us, but it's sacred to everyone that lives here in this, in this United States. Just like cattle, we want to take care of them too. We want to take care of everything like that. So well, that's why they will understand you. Thank you, Lizzie. Um, as, as some of the, um, the speakers got up and spoke to, um, and I, I know that some of the, um, the responses were to get the facts, um, I, I would hope that you do get, you would look into the, in, the reality of the Indian Self-Determination Act, not just a paragraph that is put up on um, a screen about what the Holy Indian Self-Determination Act is about, because it goes deeper than just a paragraph that's on there that, that keeps being repeated over and over. Um, the tribe is just asking to be afforded something that is in law, that is in the law. And we meet the cultural, geographical, that we meet the requirements that are in the law. We actually have a few more minutes left. If there's any more questions, that would be great. Otherwise, we can adjourn the meeting. Um, I will once again emphasize to you that if you would like to help out to defray the cost for this meeting hall, the meeting hall was $110. We had to hire the police. That was $270. And we also had to pay for the Federal Express that's going to be used. Actually, my business is going to pay for the FedEx, but if anybody wants to help out with that, each packet is probably going to be about $25 to $30 per packet. To the, so I wouldn't mind at all if you would like to help out making a donation. But you don't have to. <laughs> is there, are there any further questions or comments? Yes. I'd like to, can you hear me there? I'd like to quote on this lady, former chairwoman of the uh, Confederate Indian School of Tribe. In May 14, 1995, she spoke about the bison range and quote, we feel we'd be able to make a case to the Congress to get more money. And I think this is the whole issue of why they want to wipe out the bison.